This is Dr. Keith Gaynor who works as a senior clinical psychologist in the outpatient department of St. John of God Hospital, Still Oregon. He specializes in cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, treatments of anxiety and depression and was trained at King's College London and University College Dublin. Ten years ago he gave this speech that perfectly captures what it is like to have BPD in charts and we think it is well worth watching. So, when I say regulated emotion, what do I mean? What I mean is what we feel every day. We have good mornings and bad afternoons. We have stressful Fridays and good Monday mornings. Or in fact, we probably reverse that. We have stress, good Fridays and stressful Monday mornings. We have ups and downs, and we experience that all the time. We have a very stressful afternoon, we have a cup of coffee and a bar of chocolate, and we get through it, and we get into the traffic, and we go home, and we get on to do another day. And so normal mood and normal emotion isn't a flat line. It's a series of ups and downs, and that's how we get along. And if we're thinking here that our very best day, the very best day we've ever had, we're probably at a 10, and the very worst day we've ever had is probably at a zero, most of the time we're moving along between six and four. It's never too bad. It's sometimes good. But it never becomes too awful for us. When we think about depression, it's moving there between six and four, and then it crashes out and it's low and low and low and low, and it stays low for weeks and months at a time. And people with depression will tell you how hard it is to shift out of that, to make that first step, to move out at that point. And then at some point, if treatment works and things go well, they do come out of it, and they go back to six to four to six to four, and so on. When we think of bipolar depression, it's a whole period of weeks and months of a high, where everything is fantastic, I'm the best I've ever felt, everything is gonna go right, it's absolutely wonderful and then the weeks and months of the crash, where everything is awful and I can't move again. When we think of emotional dysregulation, it's a little bit different. If we're thinking that a regular emotion is going between six and four, a lot of people with BPD, BPD will say their regular emotion is moving between seven and three. While the rest of the world is a little bit German, they're a little bit Spanish. And that's just their normal thing. They're just a bit bigger, a bit louder, a bit more creative maybe, giving a bit more, holding back a bit less. And that's their every day. And then somewhere, moving along there, a crisis happens. And it can be a big thing or a small thing, but it knocks them off kilter. And their mood starts moving much more exaggeratedly. So it's much more, much wider and much more frequent. They'll experience those mood changes. So we're not talking about being depressed for a month. We're talking about a crash of depression at 9 o'clock in the morning, an elation at 10, and a crash of depression again at 11. We're talking about a huge, rapid, frequent change in emotion that often doesn't have to have a huge trigger. It doesn't have to be a car crash or a grief or a loss of work for this to happen. It just hits, and the person has a sudden overwhelm of emotion. And like any of us can imagine, that's incredibly hard to deal with that you're sitting there, you're in the office, somebody says something to you, and suddenly your emotions are ping-ponging up and down and up and down and up and down. So when we think of the type of emotions that might be ping-ponging, ping-ponging, they're a little bit different for different people. For some people at those peaks, it may be all about anger. They get huge overwhelms of anger. For other people, it may be anxiety. For other people, it may be kind of being hyper. We're being hypermanic, where it's just excitement and fun and buzz. And people will then tell you about what it's like at the other end. The sadness or the hopelessness or the guilt or the shame or all the low mood that comes very quickly after that. And so there's one a good afternoon of feeling great. By evening, it's turned and it's dropped and it's awful. It comes around again and it goes down again. And it just builds and builds and builds until there's too many emotions. And rather than feel too many, often the person will numb out. And they'll move from a place of numb to a place of too much, to a place of numb, to a place of too much. And they can find it very hard to get themselves back in sync again, 
to where they were moving along fairly happily.